Hey guys, welcome back. Well, we're gonna work on our little pine cupboard. Now what I've done, now what I've done, I simply cut out my pattern. And now what I'm trying to do is I'm looking to see, I told you we're gonna build two, two of them. Now I saw, you saw, when we started this, when John McGuire was here, we took, and we took and laid all this pine up, we hand planed everything till we had good flat surfaces. Then we went and skim planed it to open it up. It moved a lot cupped. Now that's the reason I chose pine. It's also the reason I chose this big thick heavy pine. Wood moves. Now if you buy wood at the box store typically that wood is already at three quarter. And also it's pretty much acclimated because you know it was kill dried and then they planed it and surfaced it for you. This is you coming from the rough and pine can be one of the worst. In any of the conifers, pine, you know, what they call white wood, which is the hemlock and spruce, it doesn't matter. And also when you go to the box store and if you're buying two by fours and two by sixes and two by eights and two by twelves, whatever, and you're gonna use it in furniture applications, that wood is not as dry as typically what a furniture grade wood is. So what are we gonna do here? I could hand plane all of this and get it back flat. But a better solution is, is to reduce it to the smallest sizes I can to get that that's gonna give me the best yield now this one right here which is off the end of it I've got a little bit but I mean I've got a minor thing so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to start out by just simply I'm gonna cut this piece off just cut it in half <clears throat> which is gonna reduce obviously the length, so that's gonna help some of that twist. Then because I'm looking to get two sides out of it, then I'm gonna rip it. And then we'll come back and see where we're at. And because being able to work these smaller pieces will give me the best yield on it. So that's what we've got. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go over here to my chop saw and I'm just, going to, I'm just going to cut this in half. I'm just going to cut that in half. Then we'll come back to the table saw. All right, <clears throat> I've jointed my long edge on this one just to give me the most guide. 
But actually, because of this pitch in here, I want to work this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this edge. I'm eight, <coughs> 18 and 3 quarters, so I'm just going to drop down about 18 and 5 eighths here and see if we get it. That'll do. Now, when I build this, I'm going to be eight and a quarter wide, but I'm going to be putting a three quarter inch base frame right here. Three quarters, seven eighths. I think I'm going to go to seven eighths. Maybe a little less than seven eighths, but I'm just going to rip this now. Uh, I'm going to head, I'm just going to rip it at seven and three quarter because I got an eight inch joiner and that'll work. Plus I know I'm going to be coming back cleaning things up a little bit. So I'm just going to rip my blank out at seven and three quarter. Because all I'm doing right now is making the wood to make the sides. All right, I'm looking at this end grain on this, and it's going to be hard for you to see. Let me go chop this real quick and see if we can get a better look at this end grain. Okay. I hope you can see this. See these growth rings coming like this? That's a cup area. That area is what's going to try to move the most on me. But you can also see I got some pitch over here. So, what I'm going to do hmm, I'm right on it too. I think in the seven and three quarter I'd rather deal with that growth ring than I would that pitch. Simply put, just would. I'm going to cut it. Now I've got the one that's twisted. And I'm going to have basically the same thing. So what I'm going to do, and I see I've still got some twist here. I got a good bit. Let's break it on down. better.
All right, that one came out pretty flat. There it is, see it? We got a good bit in this. So what am I gonna do? I could go back and do the hand plane thing. But I'm narrow enough now, I can get it across the eight inch joiner. If you don't have an eight inch joiner, you're back to doing exactly what we did. Hand plane into one side of this to get where it's set and level, then you gotta go back and plane it. Now if you recall, we talked about, we were gonna try to do some resawing and get some of the wood out of this for the backs. I don't see that happening. Not in the time we get this twist out. So, it happens. Not much I can do about it. I could save some wood, but I wouldn't get enough out of it to make it worth the time and effort of doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one side flat I'm, I'm going to put it across the joiner and we're going to get a side flat. Then we're to the point we can mill and get a flat board. But I want to be ready to start doing some building and get these things set up in a, in a form. You know, once I've got the, you know, because here's the other thing that's going to happen. Because this is, because this wood is so thick, as I start opening it up, I'm going to run into some of the same exact issues. Now for that reason, once I've got one side flat, I'm going to plane it. And then as I keep planing, I'm going to start, I'm going to flip it back and forth, back and forth. Because I'm going to open it up in as close to an equilibrium as I can, meaning I'm going to take the same amount off of this side, then this side, then this side, so that I bring it down. And by doing it that way, even though I'm opening it up more and I'm opening it up to a little bit more of an adverse moisture condition, I'm doing it equally. So it's kind of like whatever one side tries to do, the other will. But then we're going to get it in some plastic bags and hold it where, you know, so it doesn't move around. Okay, so let's move. Now here's going to be the objective. When this thing goes through this joiner, I can actually push this through holding this end down and then as it goes through I can push the other end down and I can actually joint the twist right back in it. So here's what I have to do. When I go through here I'm going to have to hold this and I'm going to concentrate my pressure right here. Right on this outer edge and just let it ride through. Not changing anything. Because if I do then like I said, see, see look what I'm showing you. I can actually push that down, go through, and then as it comes through, push it right back down over here and create the twist right back. So my pressure is here. Now this is a thick piece of wood, so press, if I'm pressing in the center, that's not a big deal. Where the big deal would come in is if this was thinner. And, and just like we, I don't remember which webisode it was, you know, you've got a board that's bowed like this and you're trying to go across here and you're pushing it down, all you're doing is taking wood off. You know, you gotta keep, you gotta go gently. Let the joiner do the work. If you're pushing the wood down, you know, you're not straightening anything. Okay, the object of this game is to create one flat surface, and that's exactly what we just did. But we have to take that through on a consistent, and hold it in a specific position so that it can't be moving. See? But we've now got one consistent side. Now, I know a lot of you guys, I know most of you guys know this, but there's a lot of guys don't. I see and read out on the forums, a guy says, gee, I don't have a planer. So I join it this side, then I came back and I join it this side, and I've got a wedge where my board is not the same thickness. That's not what joiners do. 
Okay? The only way, and, and even, I'll tell you this too, even then, if you've got a consistent thickness board and you decide to join both sides of it, go easy because you can definitely join it into, into varying thicknesses instead of an equal thickness. Now I'm going to hit this back side one more time. But here's something I want you to get. What we're having to do here is call it as it comes about. Kind of a funny way of putting it, but think about it. You know, initially we had planned to be able to resolve some of this and do different things. But because this wood has moved, we can't. So we're going to lose some wood. You know, not, a, not something I'm very happy about, and I know you wouldn't be. But welcome to woodworking. You know, and, and, and pine, like I said, is one, it's one, you know, the conifers, they're, they're some of the worst. Okay. See, when I decided to do this, I, my first inclination was not to cut this big pine up. You know, cutting these big slabs of pine up is not necessarily my favorite thing to do economically to make these two little cabinets. I'd have been far better off and far cheaper just to go into the box store and grab some pine. But I knew this would be the worst case scenario, so that's why we're addressing it. Now you know I can tell you now because I can tell by the sheen on the wood. I've ran this twice now and there's an area right here in this corner still has not touched. Right there. That hasn't touched. But this is my jointed side. So when I go to the planer, I'm going to know that. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is then, you know, I'll, Plane this side, then I'm gonna be coming back, and when I, you know, do the same equal thing on both sides, I'll get that out. This has got just a little. Alright, somebody's going to mention to me I'm not using a push stick. You're right, I'm not. Should be, but I'm not. But the reason for that is, is because I'm thick enough and heavy enough up here and I'm able to get enough grip on it, I can push it okay. And I've got plenty between me and that. If I was down thinner, I got a piece of three quarter, make sure you got a push stick. And this plastic one is not a good idea. Okay, that little notch, this will be okay, but in the same token, uh, if I get down too low, which I'm not going that thin, obviously, but if you've got a plastic one or something like that, and those knives hit that plastic, rather than cut it, they usually just kind of break them. Not a place you want to be.
Okay. So what I'm gonna do now? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna break these things down a little bit more. And I'm still debating on that resaw thing. The problem is I ain't got a form to go ask. <laughs> I'm thinking on it. And I changed my mind. You got to be able, to, as I go, you got to be able to adapt as you're going. Let me see here. I'm at an inch and a half. I can resaw this. I can, I can, I can. All right, let's look at our twisted one here. So, this was the worst one. At my thin point, I can resaw this. I can do that. So, what happened? I just changed my mind again. I thought I was going to have to take a lot more off of this to get it back flat. But since I've cut it, and I'm think all I'm doing, guys, is thinking out loud here. Okay, since I cut it at seven and three quarter, that means I'm not going to be wide enough. But I also got the off fall that came off, where I could get another piece and resaw some pieces, and instead of having two pieces for the back, I'll glue up three. Works for me. Let's go to bandsaw. All right. So what I'm going to do, I was hoping to get seven eighths for those sides, but I really don't need that because it's a hanging cabinet, <clears throat> and obviously the heavier it is, and even though pine isn't super heavy, so I'm going to resaw it at seven eighths. That'll give me a little bit more to be able to maybe get some back material out of. We'll see. Something moved. Something did move. Guess I didn't have it locked down tight. Now that's also an advantage to having this thing a little longer. All right. All right, now I've set up an entirely different scenario, completely different. Because now that I've resawed it, I've now set up an adverse drying condition. So what am I going to do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get these other three resawed. 
I'm immediately going to go back to the planer, plane them, get them flat. I'm going to tape them and I'm going to stick them in some plastic so they don't move. And we'll be migrating them out. We're going to do everything we can to keep them from moving. Remember something. <clears throat> Holding wood in a position is a whole lot easier than trying to get it into a position. By that, what I mean is, is that once I've got these flat, if I clamp them flat, then they can't move. So as they dry and acclimate even further, they'll hold truer to what we want. But the smartest thing we can do is get this into this cabinet as quick as possible. Get it locked in place. So I'm going to resaw the others, then we're going to go to the pointer. One thing I forgot to mention, you notice I've got my known, the side that we flattened on the joiner, it's up against my fence. So, now, so that's going to leave us a little, but hopefully my sawn side in here, I may have to touch it across the joiner, but I'll be able to get another flat side out of it. Plus, if I'm real careful resawing, I can kind of maintain that the best I can. Okay, one more change of thought. I resawed these, and this is the back material. And I took another piece of heavy four quarter I had because I, I wasn't going to be wide enough. And, and I mentioned we're going to go with three boards. Okay, and I also told you that, you know, I want to get this locked in to where it can't move so that it dries and does whatever and, and I want to do that as thick as possible because then if I do get some movement I've got a little bit more room to mill and so rather than stick it in plastic and deal with it later why don't I just glue up the backs now and just leave them in clamps so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue it up. Now I'm going to put a clamp under the bottom, over the top, under the bottom. Make sure I'm down nice and flat on my clamps and let them dry. Now, what I did, like I said, I took a piece of four quarter I had and it was heavy, it was about an inch and an eighth. And I resawed it. It actually started out as one of these thick pieces, but it was something we were using uh, in some class or some stuff we were dealing with the blotch control and different things like that so you can definitely spot which one it is <laughs> kind of hard to miss huh anyway but once we surface it and finish it up all that'll come off but here's the thing I'm going to do this is my re side that we just did now I cut them down a little narrow because this was giving me this was a little wider and it was clean, as you can well see. So then what I did, I need a, I want to be about 18 or so, so what I've got, this is 20 inches now. Another thing with pine, either use a call on the edge when you clamp it, or in this case, I'm just wide enough that I'll be able to come back and trim it off because a clamp will definitely leave a mark on this pine. It is soft. Now what's, what, what I'm doing is, is on this, on the, my metal board, this is the re side. So I've alternated. I've got re, the re side up, down, up. Same thing over here. And what that's going to do <coughs> is if this middle piece tries to cup, it's going to try to cup this way. The outer edges are going to try to cup this way. Now while this is by far not an ideal situation, okay, it's going to it's going to do the best I can. If I put all all the resawn sides up, it's just going to try to make one big cup. Now the glue lines in this are going to help stabilize it a lot. But again, I'm going to clamp it up and I'm not going to take it out of clamps until I absolutely have to. If I don't have enough clamps to leave it in, then once it's dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then take them out and place them together and put some clamps on them 
or what I'm going to do is stick them in a plastic bag so they can't move anymore. Because once we put it, once we get it milled and in the back, you know, and you'll see this, you know, we got a cabinet and we, we've got a little frame around it, you know, we've got a rabbit around the back that it's going to get nailed into and well, it's going to get nailed at the top and on the shelves and whatever. That'll pull it in nice and flat because the wood is not going to be that thick. So it'll ha and over this size, it'll have some flexibility. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark these and I'm going to go glue them. Then we're going to go plane those other boards and come back and start working on the carcass. I have confirmed by again laying them on my bench or the table saw that I'm still flat. Now let's assume just for a moment that you went to the box store and you bought some pine. It's usually 11 and a quarter. And you've got a cup in it. The simplest thing you can do would be to take that piece of wood, split it right down the middle, and glue it right back together. Now when you do that, you're going to wind up with a little hump and a little hump. But in this cabinet, you know, we're going to go to three quarters or so. I'm actually going to look at that. I may actually go down just a little more. If your sides wound up five eighths or nine sixteenths, not a big deal. Actually, we don't want this cabinet to look big and bulky. It's the last thing we want. We want it to have a nice, delicate look. Okay? You know, that's something particularly beginning woodworkers have an issue with. They like to build big and heavy and bulky. You know, and that's not what you want to maintain a delicate balance. You, you want furniture to have, you know, like a hanging cupboard or something. Now, if you're building a big heavy trestle table with big legs or something, or I mean, a trestle table, a big heavy leg table, that's a different animal. You know, but in furniture and things, you don't want to see big, thick, heavy pieces. That's the reason you notice just like, you know, when we're doing like the, like the high boy and, and whatever like this, you know, we're doing, <clears throat> yeah, the sides on it are seven eighths, but we're putting, you know, we keep our drawer fronts thinner. And then we once we put, you know, overlay it, it gives it a nice balance. You don't want heavy and clunky, nor do we want it here. So what we're going to do is we're going to plane this down to uh, three quarters and see what we think. Now one of the things, I don't know if you picked up on this, but I want to mention it. Again, all of my stock is a little long. Now the reason again is, just like here, I'm planing this. If I get a little snipe in the end, you know, I can cut it out. That's a good thing. 
Now sitting over here, as most a lot of you have seen, is a big Performax. And I've also got my Jet 2244 and several other sanders. But let me tell you something. Drum sanders, wide belt sanders, and pine, they're not friends. This pine will gum up your sandpaper like nothing you've ever seen. And the white pine is, yellow pine is the worst. Okay, I mean, it, it'll just trash it in a heartbeat. If you happen to do that, one of the ways you can get the pine off, we all know about the, we all know about the rubber eraser sticks, that helps. But uh, you can also take it and clean it with some mineral spirits or naphtha. It'll dissolve the resin in the pine and clean it up. But it's a whole lot better just to be able to plant it. That's three quarters. I think that'll do okay. Because one of the things, once we cut our scroll in here, we're going to be rounding that up. And that and that also roundovers help give them, help take the heaviness out of wood. It give, it helps to ease in those edges, helps to give it a little bit more of a delicate balance. So we've got our side wood process. Now let's go up and we're going to get it cut to size. Uh, get our dados cut in it and and the reason I want to do that is again if this wood tries to move once I've got it milled and I want to do that while it's at its flattest point and that's right now so that's what I want to do let's go to the front okay now before I do anything because we've done the re you know we had to flatten everything get the twist out. We resawed. That is a pretty good, that's the other reason for keeping yourself wider than what you need up until the last minute. Here's the issue. Odds are our sides are now pretty, pretty much guaranteed not 90 degrees to our face. In other words, this is not a square here. So what I just did is I passed one side over the joiner make sure it's square. Now I'm just going to do a skim cut. Again, this ensures I'm straight and my sides are parallel. I've told you this many times, sneak up on it. <coughs> Norm Abram of the New Yankee Workshop wrote a book and it was called Art and had to his little cliche, it says, measure twice, cut once. I tell you again, Mine is measured twice and cut three times. Sneak up on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the chop saw. I'm going to square this end and then I'm going to cut it to length. 
Now, the length we've got is 32 and a quarter. <clears throat> but I'm not going to worry about getting exactly to that. I can get that a little later. Actually, I'm at 33. So all I'm, so I'm probably going to cut this, what did I say, 32 and a quarter? I'm probably going to cut it 32 and a half. And the reason for that is, is that when I come in and I start making this point right here, I want to be able to come in and, and have something to cut. I don't, I don't want this to be my stop point. I want to actually be able to cut, keep cutting right on past the line. So I'm going to go cut them at 32 and a half. Make sure both ends are square. Now I need to sort out what's going to be my inside and my outside. Now I got a little bit of an issue because I still got some, a little bit of this resin right here. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, if I put this on the inside and up at the top, hidden, I can seal that off with a little bit of shellac and it's not going to give me a major issue. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. These are pretty clean, so it's not going to matter. So I'll just put the, put the white sap in the back, and that's the way I'm going to put them together. Not really a lot of hard choices here. Okay. Let me get my pattern, or my story. Now the way this, the way this is going to work, <clears throat> When this is hanging on the wall, we have a little shelf that goes right here. And this shelf is going to be cut on a little bit of an arch. But we want to fit it in in a little dado here. Now, so we got to do a stop dado. Now, there's all kinds of ways of doing these. Typically, they're done. You can make a jig with a router or whatever. But we're just going to do it real simple, okay? And I'll show you exactly <clears throat> what I'm going to do. So we'll be right back and <clears throat> we'll cut that. Okay, the first order of business is we're going to cut this little dado for our shelf. Now what we're actually going to do is it's a stop dado, but it's also a blind dado. Meaning that, well, we're going to make when we put a shelf in, we're going to make like a little teeny tenon on it. Because, so in that way, we're ensured that we get a nice tight fit to the side of our case. And if we're off a little bit on the dado or whatever, won't nobody know. Okay. So what I've done, if I'm using three-quarter material, I want the dado to be a half inch because I want a little eighth of an inch on top of the shelf and an eighth of an inch on the bottom. Okay, so what I've done, I've measured up six inches, actually six and a quarter, because I left this a quarter inch longer. And then added my half inch. So this is going to be my dado. Now the reason for that is, again, <clears throat> is what's going to happen is that we're going to use a three quarter inch piece of material. And we want a little eighth of an inch reveal on top and bottom of that. Like I said, we're going to make it like a little tenon in here. So I only want my dado half inch. <clears throat> now, the shelf I want in here is going to be four inches. <clears throat> so I'm going to measure in four inches, but four inches isn't itn four inches. <laughs> I know, I know. What in the well, we got to put a little we got to put a little rabbit in the back of this for our back to set in. So we're going to do the back at three eighths. Okay. Now remember, we got half inch material or thereabouts, and so I think we can get three eighths out of it pretty good, or at least one good side three eighths. If the back of it's got some saw marks or whatever in it, that's okay. So we're actually going to measure in four and three-eighths and that's going to be a shelf but yeah there's always a but 
we, we also want a little reveal on the front of that shelf. So we want, and I'm going to make that about a quarter. So instead of four and three eighths, I'm actually going to measure in, subtract that quarter, I'm going to measure in four and an eighth. That's going to be the dado. Okay? So that's going to be my stop point. Four and one eighth. Okay, <clears throat> we'll be right back. Let me get set up to cut this and we'll be right back. Okay, just a little bit of old school here, just for fun. And what I've got, I've got a scrap piece of wood, actually a piece of MDF. I've got to set square to my line. Just a saw. Now, you got to cut on an angle. Don't get out past your stop point. And this data only needs to be about an eighth of an inch deep. Now, why the scrap wood? If you can cut it straight, go ahead. If you can't, a little bit of wood just helps you get it, cut it straight. Now right here, because I'm coming this way, make sure you don't go to your line. Make sure you leave a little, just a little bit for the saw curve. All right, that's all it takes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've got my router, I've got a, just a double fluted bit, straight cut bit, and I'm going to set it at an eighth of an inch, just a little, or close. Now that eighth of an inch, that's just all you need. And the reason for that is, is that, that that sheer angle, that shelf is setting on it. And this is a small shelf. So I doubt you're going to be putting cinder blocks and books and all that stuff on it. But that's just about all we need. Alright, that'll do. Alright. All I'm going to do, I've got a well, at one point it was a clear base, but I've got a large opening. We've talked about that. You can make it out of a piece of quarter inch plywood. You just want something you can see in here. I'm not going to try to go right to the line. Now all I've done is taken out the majority of the meat. I also established the bottom of the dado. Now it's a simple matter. Take a chisel and just clean it up. Nice looking chisel, huh? I didn't get quite deep enough on my cut. Yeah. 
So as you can see, it's just a little, clean it up. And all's good. Take your chisel, come right in on your line, chisel your, you know, your stop square, and you're done. Okay. This is this, this is the stop one. I'm gonna do the other three. We'll come back and we'll cut the one for the big shelf. It goes all the way across inside. I need to create two dados. First one is going to be actually we're actually going to do three on one. I'll explain in a minute. Here's going to be the bottom of my door. I'm 20 inches down from the top. So I'm going to set a date. I got to put a, a bottom, a floor in it below the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in at 19 and three quarters. And I'm going to cut that same half inch dado. Actually, I need to. No, I need to come down another eighth, don't I? Yep, so I need to come down 19 and 7 eighths. And we're going to cut that little same half inch dado here for our shelf to go in here. And that's going to make it a quarter of an inch above where the face frame will be. That'll give us a door stop. Okay, then we're going to have to cut a dado for the shelf, and I'm going to cut on the, on one of them. I'm going to cut a dado for an inner shelf. I mean, an inner top. I want to give you. I told you we're doing two, so I want to give you a couple different ways of doing it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself at 19 and seven eighths. All right. Now, always pay attention to your orientation. Meaning, we're just these are a three data coming all the way through. So all we have to do is orient based on the top. That's what, you know. So we're going to run all of them. I've already set my half inch data up, and I've set it at the same eighth of an inch depth. Just run them. Now, what I need to do is I need to get, on one of these, I'm just going to cut a half inch dado into the top, but I'm going to do that a little deeper, so I want to get the center shelf. All of this will come, come to you as we go through it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to put it in the center. Sounds like a, so I'm going to measure it. All right, so if I come from the top, I'm going to be at nine and three quarter inches, but I'm going to be better off on this to index from the longer side, which is going to be coming up from the bottom. So it's 22 and a quarter.
All right. Again, pay attention to your orientation. This time, we're going to be indexing from the bottom. On one of these, we're going to dovetail up. We're going to dovetail the top on coming up. We're going to dovetail the top on to the, to the sides. Through dovetails up through the top. We're going to put a molding around it. On the up, but some guys, that could be a little bit of an issue. And it takes a minute sometimes. So on the other one, what I want to do is we're just simply going to put an inner top in it then make another top that sits down on it, screws on. A little easier. All right? So, but to make that provision for that little dado in the top, what I want to do is I want to set my dado a little deeper. I'm at three quarters. I'm actually going to set this dado at a half, half inch. So let me do that real quick. 